Hello, welcome back to Path to Wellness with Miriam. Today I am wrapping up my series on my faith journey. I ended the last one talking about Catholic Church and journey there. Now I wanna talk about uh, our first Lent. Lent is the six weeks, the 40 days before Easter. We got the ashes on Ash Wednesday, you know, on our forehead. And I didn't fast that Lent. I was like, this is my last Lent, not being Catholic. Like, um, then I'm gonna be confirmed in the Catholic Church and I'm gonna have to be fasting so I'm skipping it this year so yeah I've I guess always been a little bit of a rebel so I was choosing to kind of rebel one last time um, but it wasn't one last time I talked about this thorn in the flesh that I had um, in a previous episode and uh, God had delivered me from this and so when I went to my first confession, I said, do I really have to confess everything? And they said, since you were baptized. And I told you that I was baptized when I was 15 by submersion. And so I had to go back all the way to then. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, so I, I confessed everything. And for the first time, I was really delivered um, from my sins. And I didn't feel the shame. Like if I thought back about my thorn in the flesh, I didn't feel intense shame anymore about it. And that's when I experienced the power of the confessional. During the Easter vigil was when we were actually confirmed. And that was a really awesome experience. I'm not gonna talk so much about everything, uh, but it was, it was just pretty. We dressed up, uh, the church was packed out. Um, Easter vigil services are just really amazing. Uh, some people got baptized. Um, since my husband and I were already baptized, we were um, confirmed and that's when they anoint you with oil. We believe that that's when actually the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And coming from that charismatic church where uh, people prayed over us and sometimes like you would feel like, like this heat, you know, they would put your hand like that, like away from your head and and they would pray and you, you you would feel like this warm feeling and in this peace over you and you'd really feel the holy spirit or sometimes when i worship and i could feel the holy spirit like like there was a thick warm blanket like a like a fog but warm instead of cold in the whole whole room that's what i felt in the catholic church that night i felt like this this peace and this kind of surrealness and like this thick presence of the Holy Spirit. And when the priest started praying, oh man, like that, it felt so amazing for them to anoint us with oil and then for me to just get that prayer and it was, seriously, it was like the best, one of the best, one of the best experiences in my life. I just felt God's presence so real and like his touch. And then they said like, you are like holy. And they said, you are um, like at this moment, you are so holy, like you're freed from all sin and go out among the congregation. So we went out on the, among the congregation and we shook people's hands and people touched us and it was just really neat. And then we ended up going forward for our first Eucharist and that was just really neat. A couple of my Catholic friends, one was my sponsor and uh, she was there of course. And then another Catholic friend who had converted from being Protestant a couple of years prior to my conversion, she was there. So it was just really meaningful to have uh, my friends, to have my family. Um, some members of my family were there and some weren't. And it was just a really awesome so one of the first things that we did after we were Catholic, we had our two children baptized. That also was a really neat experience. After a while, we, we ended up moving. And so uh, we, we moved very, very far away. But we had to find a new Catholic church. And in some ways this was so nice because you know, when, when my parents moved, um, they had to like visit all these different churches and decide where are we going to go to church and some days they would switch denominations but we knew we wanted to stay catholic and we were like so where are the catholic parishes and we found i think three and we visited 
two or three of them and then we decided to go to the one and partly because of the location and the time worked out nice we realized like oh they seen some contemporary songs here as well as hymns and and so things were, were a little cool and different you know and then we we had our third child and we wanted to have her baptized but we decided that we wanted family to be there so we ended up traveling for her baptism and we had her baptized by uh, the same deacon who baptized our oldest two, which was just really special and really neat to us. If I had to do it over again, I think I would have baptized her in like her first month of life because it was really hard waiting. I think she was like um, seven months or something, eight months when she was baptized. And so it was, um, it was hard to wait that long. You know, when, when you know a, a sacrament is just so beautiful and so full of grace, like you don't want to hold your kids back from receiving that and you don't want to make them wait. And so um, I'm kind of like, yeah, maybe I'll baptize my baby as soon as it comes out <laughs> next time. Uh, so we've, we've moved around a little bit. So we, we were in the, that parish and then we went to another parish. Uh, because we moved to a different town and then we moved again and so then now now we're at like been going to the same church for a year almost a year and a half we're probably going to be going to this parish for a really long time at least i hope so it's actually the cathedral it's really neat because we get to hear the bishop once in a while uh deliver a homily which is really special and we have uh, three other priests who take turns with all the different masses. So we really get the blessing of seeing the different perspectives and the different styles of homilies. The other thing is priests in the Catholic Church tend to move around a little bit more. The Catholic Church is really... Uh, it, it doesn't change as much when a priest moves on. I mean, yes, the parish changes a little bit, but it's really uh, about the people versus a lot of Protestant churches. The church is about the pastor and so that when the pastor leaves like a church can change denominations when the new pastor comes or it can be really shooken up and changed up you know you can uh look back if you haven't watched one about like uh being baptist you know when i was going to that baptist church and and then the pastors left like the church totally completely changed one thing that i realized is slowly i had stopped listening to music I think I only listen to music once in a while in the car with my children and then music at church, you know, singing at church. And I still love music as part of worship, but I've been last year uh, doing a lot of soul searching, especially towards the end of the year. And uh, it, it took a really good friend of mine to remind me about how I used to dance and worship and sing and, and just listen to music all the time when I was going to that charismatic church, you know, and I was at college. And I realized that I missed that part of me and I missed it so much and I needed that part of me. Nothing has really changed as far as church, except for me. For Christmas, I ended up getting this little boom box and I listen to the radio. I listen to Air One, Christian worship music, all the time, <laughs> hours every day. And it's just been really neat. It's really lifted up my spirits. It's uh, helped with the winter blues. It's changed my children. They are happier, they bicker less, and they actually ask to turn on the music. They're like, can we turn on the music? Um, and they turn on the radio if it's off and so it's just been really neat and the thing that's changed With my relationship to church is I realized because I'm worshiping to music Outside of church. It's really improved my worship in in church There's a part of me that wants to dance and once in a while I do here at home like I'll, I'll dance um, to worship and Music and it's really neat and that's something that I kind of miss when I'm, you know, at Catholic Church. Um, but there's such a beauty in the way everyone during different parts of liturgy kneels and stands and sits and raises their hands during the Our Father. You know, there, there's such a beauty in, in the liturgy and I really love it. Um, but I also sometimes miss that freedom of worship. I can have this freedom of worship in my house and worship in a different way at church. 
and I can join other Christians who are not Catholic to pray, to pray in the spirit. Some of my friends that I meet with and pray, they speak in tongues. You know, I, I don't know if I told you, but back in the charismatic craziness, I actually spoke in tongues. Uh, but I really haven't spoken in tongues since then. Um, so I know slowly God is bringing back things, little pieces of who I was and who I am. Like he's unbearing it. And that's just been really neat. I see where God is working so much in my life, just overall. But with this church thing, I feel like finally I've reached a point where I've come full circle and I can embrace every part of my church journey and I can look back at every single part and see where God was um, directing me every in every single part of my church journey and the parts that really hurt in the past. They don't hurt anymore because Jesus has healed that hurt. And I just really encourage you not to give up on the church, not to give up on Christ's body if you have church hurt and to just press forward. I feel like I'm finally home. If you're wondering, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna move on from the Catholic church, at least not anytime soon. One thing that keeps me in the Catholic church more than anything else is the Eucharist. I believe that Jesus fully embodies the host, the bread, and the wine, and that it actually is Jesus. And when we partake, we are taking Jesus into our lives in a spiritual sense, but also in a very physical sense. You know, as I learn more about health and wellness, is you are what you eat. You know, if you eat junk food, your your body breaks down. If you eat healthy foods, your body gets stronger and more nourished and fights cancer and you know, all that stuff. And when we eat of Christ, we become Christ. We become his body. We become more loving. We become more joyful. We, uh, we have peace. We have patience. God changes us from the inside out. That partaking of the Eucharist changes us from the inside out. I know that a lot of people don't believe in the Eucharist. They don't believe it's Jesus. Uh, they think it's just symbolic and that's what most um, churches believe. And that's okay, that's okay. Uh, one thing that I love is that, you know, when we, when we believe in Jesus, that he unifies us and we don't all have to believe the same thing as long as we believe in Jesus and we believe he is the way, the truth and the life, uh, we have that in common and that then we are brothers and sisters in the Lord. And I want to focus on the themes that unify us. My family, like, I mean, my husband, kids, obviously, they all go to Catholic church. Like, we all go together. Um, but my mother, I mean, that, that could be a whole other video. I could have my mother here and talk about her <laughs> church journey. <laughs> the series would be twice as long. She is Anglican now with one foot in the Catholic door. And uh, I have brothers who are unchurched, um, not going to church at all. Um, I have a brother who's Anglican. I have a brother who goes to a non-denominational or something church. I have another brother that goes to charismatic church. You know, we're, we're all going to different churches and that's okay because what unifies us is Jesus and that's what's important is Jesus. And so I want to encourage you in your relationship with Jesus is to just keep on loving Jesus, keep on opening your heart up to him and allowing Jesus to work in your life, to change your heart, um, to love on you and to use you and to use you in the body of Christ because when we are united, we are stronger, we are more powerful, we are able to encourage one another more and to build each other up and prayer is a really powerful thing too in fact maybe i should do a video on prayer if you love the series and you want to see more videos like this more videos about um, my story more videos about my faith what i believe in and stuff be sure to comment down below and see that um, if you want me to talk about prayer if you want me to go more in depth on worship or different types of worship or you know anything like that, just be sure to um, do, do that. Uh, be sure to like and give a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great and blessed day.